Hi there and welcome to the fifth in a series of, of how-to videos um, that are intended to move you from chaos to consistency. So in the last video we talked about hiring. We talked about hiring to your values, following the three golden rules for hiring. But of course your hiring system isn't finished until you've completed someone's probation until you have got to that yes, no answer at the end of their probation period. So in this video, I want to talk to you about the lost art of running an effective probation period. Because let's face it, there are so many people in businesses working merrily away today who never actually really passed a probation. They just drifted into full-time employment or their probation period has been extended and extended again and extended again because they're such a lovely person and oh I'm sure they'll get it eventually. So of course hiring is such a big investment. You want to make really sure that you are hiring well. You know you've, you've taken all that time, you've not settled, you've hired to your values, you've taken all that time to get the, the person that you think is the right person in the door. These next 90 days are crucial in making sure that they actually are, making sure that they are a good fit for you, that they that they feel they're a good fit for you as well. So how do we get that right? Well, it starts with your first day. Now, I don't know how many first days you, you may or may not have had in business, um, you know, as an employee, or whether you can remember them. Um, but that first day is often awful. <laughs> You know, I, I can think back to, well, I, I had a couple of first days um, and one of those first days, actually, I got a letter telling me um, that I was late and I'm looking at a letter going, no, my start date's next week. And they're saying, you no, it's, it's today. Um, so you can imagine the stress I then felt, the guilt they felt because they'd sent me the wrong letter. It was just a, a mess. But on a more on a more regular basis, um, it's people just walking through the door and oh oh god, it's your first day today, crikey! Okay, um, if you can just sit there, uh, I'll, ooh, we're a bit busy at the moment. I'll get back to you. It's those sort of first days that are um, <clears throat> really memorable, but for all the wrong reasons. So the first thing that obviously that you need to think about with making a mem memorable first day is to prepare. It's to make sure that you are fully prepared, that you have, treat it like um, you were taking a new love of your life to meet the family for the first time. What would you do then? You'd be fully prepared. You'd have cleaned the house. You'd have warned your family to be nice to them <laughs> and telling them their name. Think about it in, in that way. What would you do to prepare for that? and prepare even better for this new employee. It's that, it's that crucial first impression of you, your team, your business, and you want them to, you know, you want them to walk into a welcoming environment. So how can you prepare for that? Um, I have seen businesses, you know, set up all the tech and have a you know, bottle of champagne on a desk and, and all sorts of things. In a remote working environment, obviously that isn't quite as easy, although, you know, obviously you could send them things through the post or whatever. Um, you could get the whole team onto a, um, onto a Zoom call to say hello and introduce themselves. So there are things that you can do to make that first day memorable. So preparing is the first part. Giving them essential information that they need, um, like <clears throat> how, how, their, uh, how their days are going to work. You know, if you are working in an office, um, what break times look like, where to go to the toilet, where to get a coffee, that sort of thing. Um, if you're working remotely, uh, when your daily, what time your daily huddles are, how to access them, um, what about your, your weekly meetings and so on. So just giving that essential information. The rest of their first day should all be about inspiration. So if you as business owner cannot be present for whatever reason on, on a team member's first day, call them, call them up, ideally, you know, FaceTime them, um, or send them a, send them, a, if you're really sort of away and not, not accessible at all, send them a video that they can that open on their, 
on their Thursday to show that you, as the business owner, care about them as, as, as an employee on that very first day. And when, I, when I'm talking about inspiration, I'm talking about um, telling them how important they are to the business, how their role fits into the bigger picture, your plans for them, you know, how you're going to develop them over the, over the time that they're with you. Um, the way you develop your team, how you build your team, how the business started, all of those inspiring things. You want that person to be leaving leaving you on that first day, going, oh God, I've made such a good de- decision, I can't wait to get back for day two. And absolutely not walking away and go, oh my God, that was so boring. Because what often happens, as we know, on a first day is, oh, just sit there and, and you know, just look through our website or here are all our procedures. If you just have a good read through those. No, absolutely not. You, they don't need to have all of that detailed information on their first day. This is about inspiration. So, you know, if we were talking percentages, I would say 30% preparation, making sure that you are absolutely ready for them to, to come in through that door. 10% information, the really vital stuff, you know, any, anything legal, that you have to do in that first day. And then the rest, 60% inspiration. So that they are absolutely buzzing when they leave you. And if it and if that means that you send them home or or let them have you know a half day, so be it. It's more important that they are inspired on that first day than that you keep them there for nine hours um, or eight hours, whatever. So Memorable first day is the first and crucial part of a probation system. The second part then is obviously the first week. And in the first week, you really want to, to get through all of the, uh, the paperwork, you know, get there, make sure that their contract all signed, that um, they've done any, you, you know, you've, you've um, got everything legally that you need in place. Maybe if, you, if you, they have to pass a health and safety Um, test or do a little bit of training or manual handling whatever it might be those sort of things get those out of the way in the first week Uh, but also spend time giving them you know the the big picture of the business you know let them meet other members of the team you know spend half an hour an hour with each member of the team to understand the big picture to understand the customer journey you know talk them through the customer journey better still if you've got a um you know, a customer journey map that you can share with them and talk through. Uh, we'll get onto that in a later video. Um, and talking about a later video, the other thing that you will share with them in their first week is their training map. Um, <clears throat> what exactly are you going to expect them to know and be able to do by the end of their 90 days? You know, what are the how-tos that you want them to work through? And as I say, we will we will talk about how you build that in a in a later video. Um, their what does their probationary review look like? Talk them through that. What are they going to be measured against? How are you going to make your decision at the end of their ninety days? And the final thing you'll do in the in the first week and the, in the first few days really is to put in put the dates for three meetings in your diary and theirs. The thirty day meeting. A 60 day meeting and then of course the 90 day meeting which is the end of their probation period you want those dates set in stone in your diary and theirs so that they're not forgotten when it comes to the 90 days then just take them through the training get your team to work with them take them through the training that you promised uh, make sure that they are getting feedback day to day talk to your team about how they're how they're working how they're fitting in um, you know, are they showing you one side of side of themselves, but showing the team a very different side? You know, what what is what does the whole picture look like? Um, and then, of course, have those thirty and sixty day meetings to share with them how they're doing overall. You know, don't wait until the ninety days and then go. Actually, you know, you you just you just didn't you know you didn't show up as we expect to. You didn't take initiative. You didn't. Give them that information when they've got a chance to do something about it. Give them that feedback um, that that will help them to get it right. You know, set them up for success. If they then still, you know, if, if it's still a no at the end, 
so be it. But at least give them that chance in those uh, in those thirty and sixty day meetings. The the other thing to to recognise, and uh, you know, this may not be the same for you, but it certainly is for me. My gut tells me whether somebody is right within. Well, to be honest, I I can often tell in the interview, so that helps. But when you've when you've sort of you've been sucked in by somebody who's been very good in an interview, you can tell as soon as they start working and working with the team and the questions they ask and how they behave, how they interact with the rest of the team, you can tell very quickly whether they're going to be right. Um, <clears throat> but of course, we all want to give somebody a chance because we want to develop them as a person. You know, I talk about that a lot, you know, train the individual as a team member from day one, but develop them as a person. So we want to give them time. So we need to give them feedback. When it gets to the uh, to the 90 day meeting, you're going to take them through their probationary review. You're going to refer back to feedback that, you know, that you've given them day to day um, in the course of in, in the course of their probation period. Uh, you're going to refer back to feedback that you gave them in the in their 30 and 60 day meetings and of course you're going to give them you're not going to focus entirely on the negative in those meetings of course if somebody's doing brilliantly you're going to share that with them but when it comes to that 90 day meeting you must walk into that room or onto a zoom call very clear about whether it's a yes or no answer really really clear if you've got a six month probation period so be it i never quite got that but uh, but I understand that you know it, it works for some people and you know if it's what you do it's what you do but whether it's a six month probation or a three month probation period when you walk into that call that that meeting you have to know very clearly whether it's a yes or no answer you know all of this um Oh, they're such a lovely person and I just I, I just I'm sure they'll get it I just want to give them if somebody hasn't got it within three months let alone six chances are one they're going to slow down they're going to slow down the rest of the team or they are um, they're going to become they're going to become a burden to you because you're gonna to have to put in so much time and energy to to bring them up to speed and also don't forget that they might, might be absolutely ideal for another business that doesn't work at your fast pace or doesn't need, you know, doesn't need somebody that really shows initiative or whatever, whatever it is that this individual is struggling with. So don't fudge, don't fudge the yes, no answer. It's too important. As I said at the beginning, it's a big investment to hire somebody. And if you hire, if you hire the wrong person, if you keep the wrong person on after probation, you're just building pain in for further down the line when you then decide that really do you know what they're not they're not right for this team they're not performing as i wanted them to so just cut the cord while you can early on because then go and find somebody that's absolutely brilliant the reason that most people don't do that is because they don't want to go right back to the beginning and start hiring again but again in terms of waste of time and money the waste of time and money actually comes from keeping them on and and uh, trying to make it work for both of you. Um, so just just bear that in mind. Yes, no answers are really important. If it's a yes answer, brilliant. Welcome to the team. Celebrate. Uh, have a bottle of champagne ready. Make a big deal of it. Just like you would if you were you know if you you just got engaged to to your new partner. You know you wouldn't just go yeah well done you know you'd, you'd make a big deal of it wouldn't you um so if it's a yes absolutely do that if it's a no um, give them really honest feedback about why it's a no why you feel it's um they aren't right for your business but the qualities that they have that will be that will be useful for for somebody else um you know if they've just been a bad one, <laughs> then tell them um of course, if they'd been a bad one, you probably wouldn't have actually got to the 90 day meeting. You'd have cut them off at the pass further down the line, or I hope you would. Um, but yeah, just give them just just be really open and honest with your feedback. I think that's that's the most important thing and the most helpful thing that you, that you can do for somebody when you're letting them go at any stage in their uh, in their journey with you. 
So that's really how to that's that's how to set up an effective probation system. Memorable first day that you prepare for, you give them a little information, a lot of inspiration. Great first week that just gives them the overall picture and they can see how they fit in and sets them up for this is what my probation period looks like, this is what I'm going to be measured against. And then the rest of the probation period is all about training. It's about giving them the opportunity. It's about giving them feedback and then getting to that yes, no answer. So I hope that's been, I hope that's been helpful for you. Now, of course, uh, hiring and probation period are two elements of building a great team, you, you know, your team building system. The third element is assessing your existing team. Um, and that's what we're going to cover off in the in the next video. Um, and don't forget, in the bigger picture, team building is 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 just one part of a nine step framework of seven systems, seven business critical systems that we take our clients through. Um, and then I'm going to share with you over this series of of how to videos. So please do subscribe and ding the bell so that you uh, you know when the when the next video is coming up. Um, and I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, take care, stay safe.